in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on 50 centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you okay thank you for watching be blessed Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted. Not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness. Let me teach you something. A am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? Next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you, don't get up and just jot it down. Whether it is raining or not, if you have to cancel your job for that day, is it not when you are alive you go for work? If you get up and see dead people where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is dead calling you, calling your children. Sit down and allow the devil come and destroy you. That's what happens to people. They don't do anything about it. And you see, and because they don't act, one day you find out that you just get up. Whereas it was concluded. Remember the book of Job. They were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily. And in one day, everything happened. That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people. Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now, with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs. It can never say enough. This grave, it keeps opening. Hell and enlarge itself. Opens, receive people. Finds young people. Just when people are at the prime of their life, that devil comes from wherever. Don't ever make death look like a mystery. It is as predictable a spirit as sickness. Innocent people plan their lives. I don't know why I started talking about this. Plan their lives and do what? Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you leave God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. Make sure you insist that you are here for a long time. There is work to be done. Give birth to children and before the ch children are still young, you die and leave them. And leave them in the hands of wicked people. It's not to make you afraid. It's to let you know that death can, it has, it attempts, death is boastful. You say, oh death, where is your victory?
it's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when we say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Then, we're ending that place. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Oh, sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John, we are looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality like I've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. And it's a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual. And I'm not just talking of born again. Born again is a decision, is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ. But there is a journey that a believer must follow. To get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart. That place is the place of power. That place is the place of authority. That is the place where Satan, death, hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you. There is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John, chapter 2, and verse 15. A popular scripture here. I want us to examine it. Just listen to me carefully. First John, chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. First John, chapter 2. First John, chapter 2, verse 15. 15. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me again and I will bring laughter to her family. And I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter, the sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Please follow me carefully. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Go back to verse 15. There is a journey into what we call carnality. Carnality is not, um, it's not necessarily a bad word. It's just a description of a state. Please listen carefully. When we say a man is carnal, it's not supposed to be an insult. Are we together? The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death. 
but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Bible gives us the progression of carnality. Carnality is not materialism. Carnality leads to materialism. Are we together? Carnality is not unrighteousness. Carnality leads to unrighteousness. Listen very carefully. And this is how the journey starts. Number one, love not the world. The word world there is the world system. The governing system. The system of activities that are in the world. It's not just talking about... Um, um, it's not just talking about the cosmos alone. You see that? It's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone. But it also has an extension. It's the word aeon. The, the thinking pattern, the mentality, the system of operation, the modus operandi that comes with the world system. Listen, it says love not the world. So that is the foundation. That's how believers or people become carnal. The starting point of carnality is an attachment. An attachment to the system. Listen, not receiving cars and houses, that's not carnality. Not prosperity, not poverty. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. Many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of God. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But then he says... The word there is eros, love, attachment, attachment. So the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God, the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system. You can have things, but when they have you, it's called carnality. The mistake of the rich fool was not his possession. He said, my soul, find rest. That was his mistake. Not, not the abundance, but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things. Are we together now? So the Bible says, love not the world. It's a warning. Is a warning that if you want to be spiritual, do not be attached. That means every one of us by default, born of a woman, there is a probability to be attached with this system. The flamboyancy that is associated with this system. Their, their desires and their lusts and their appetites. That this is something that by default we can become victims of. Then he moves further and says, neither the things. That means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that, but the things that are there, you can be attached to them. You see, but let me tell you, forget about walking with God when the things of this world are glued to you. The Bible, we're, we're, we're still on that journey. It says, if any man loves the world, that means he gives you a little test. Like saying, if any man has a pounding headache, there are signs that that man probably has malaria. So he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the, the love of God that is at work in you. You can easily check it by your attachment. Your attachment. The same way you check your temperature, your pressure, and all of these things, that you can check that love dimension. And then it categorizes them into three. It says all that is in the world, the next verse, 16. For all that is in the world can be categorized into three. Number one, he calls it the lust of the flesh. The limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body. If you did not possess a body, there are certain things that cannot happen to you. But now because you sustain a material body, that there are side effects to having this body. Are we together now? And he's saying that you must walk with the Holy Spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body. And then the second, he says, the lust of the eyes. The limitations that come upon your life 
on the strength of the things you see. How many of you know that the Bible says the eye is the light of the body? There are things if you did not have capacity to see, they will not be planted in your heart. The word imagination comes from the word image. And that's how we think. We think in pictures. So you, your, your, your eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart. And then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit. Are we together now? The lust of the eyes. And then the third is called the pride of life. You've heard me teach it. The pride of life is different from pride. You cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements. You can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved. But the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements. Like Nebuchadnezzar, having built Babylon, he said, make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments, let all men bow. That's the pride of life. The pride of life is what happened to Lucifer. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. Until he was charged with iniquity. Are we together now? And so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life. That the love of the father is in you. And that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual. Listen. The depth to which the power of God flows through you. All these miracles, these signs and wonders that you see, they don't just happen because hands are laid. Please, I, I like us, let's, let's be, um, please come David, um, let's, let's not make a fool of ourselves here. There is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands. There are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself. A track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens. You don't just speak and then God, it looks like God owes your word attention. No, sir. No, sir. For I am a man under authority. And the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty. And on the strength of my submission, I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come. It's not my eloquence. It is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority. Are we together now? So he says, love not the world. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Thank you, David. This is the problem that Jesus came to solve. You see, if you have an encounter with Jesus, listen. He's not going to ask you whether you believe in the Old or New Testament. That, that is nonsense. Jesus is not going to ask you all those things. Jesus is not going to ask you and say, which part of the Ten Commandments did you keep or which law? Did, or did? No, no, no. He's going to ask you one question. Just one question. His emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart. It's called Christ self-centeredness and self-centeredness Christ-centeredness is when Christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what Jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you God so designed that you can acquire things without Christ being at the center of your heart. But that becomes your undoing. Because they will destroy you and wreck your life. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many hours you pray. I don't care how many Bible study concordances you have. I don't care how many services you have per week. If you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where Christ is at the epicenter of your heart. You are carnal. Period. Period. You are as carnal as the word carnal. It's true. It's not an insult. It's a description. It's a state of a believer. You are spiritual, not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues. You are spiritual, not just to the degree to which you access revelation. By diligence, you can commit your mind and your spirit to access life without being spiritual. Theologians have spent 
Yes. I mean, remember the scribes and the Pharisees. They were carnal, yet they had the five books of Moses of heart. So knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality. It can be helpful provided Christ is at the center of your heart. The foundation for a life of greatness, listen, the foundation for a life of the miraculous. Any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things, carrying and hosting the presence of God, that individual has through sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives. Not money, not fame, not cars, not houses. Are we together? Not wife, not husband, not marriage. That does not mean you are unconnected to these things. But that Christ sitting in your heart now gives value. Whatever comes, comes under his authority. If you don't get this, this is, this is, this is power 101. If you don't get this thing, forget about spiritual power. There are fasting giants who fast with them. They are getting lean, but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart. No, side who walk that way. Christ must become the center of your life. And you can know your attachment, your attachment to things your attachment to this system. Is God helping us? When your life becomes Christ-centered, your life will speak particular languages. Number one, thy will be done. Thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives. Number two, that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal Jesus. The revelation of Jesus becomes the obsession of your life. Not the revelation of your prestige. Not the revelation of your educational prowess. Not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things. The revelation of Jesus in and through your life. This is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three. That any and all that you do becomes for his glory. The Lord's prayer. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory. Thine is the kingdom. I receive all of the blessings. But yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. The Bible says, and they glorified God. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard, come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things. Remember my miracle service message last Friday? Can God trust you? That's a powerful message. Go and sit down and listen to it. Because what God gives you is a measure of his trust for you. It's, it's as simple as that. If there are dimensions you are praying about and say, Lord, lift me up, take me high. And God says, no way. Stop praying and saying, oh God, ask, Lord, what is it in me that is the resistance? What is in anointing that God cannot give you? What is in prosperity that God cannot give you? Mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but God is not a fool just because he said I will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment List them in your mind. You don't have to chorus them, but list them. Money, career, power, anointing, revelation, children, 
wife, husband, house, whatever it is, cars and all of that, none of these things in themselves destroy. But when they come to you, the state of your heart can make them evil or good. Are we together now? Yes. Do you know the foundation for jealousy? Listen, the foundation for envy, backbiting and all of these things is one word, self. 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 It is because I want to give a perception that I am a big man. So if somebody calls me Joshua Selman, I now say, where is the apostle? You didn't add it. You see that? My ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and I react. So I say, this, this guy, you are not, you are disrespecting me. You are trying to say, I'm not anointed. You see that? And this is, our lives on earth are, it's like an, an action film. People acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality. Sometimes we call it spirituality, but it's really carnality. It's really carnality. Love not the world. Brothers and sisters, I show you a secret to rest. This is where high blood pressure comes from. Hello? Hello? This is where high blood pressure, ask the doctors, they will tell you. Self-inflicted worrying. My ego is on the line. See? Right? My ego is on the line. If this thing is not done, I prophesy to David Dam. If that word does not come to pass, they will now think I'm not an accurate man of God. So my ego is on the line. I'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because I want to see his life change. I am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change. That's the problem the scribes and the Pharisees had. It was not healing. They would not have a problem if it happened through their hands. But the fact that it didn't happen through their hands, they just found an excuse and said, Madam, don't get healing on Sunday. And Jesus said, what are you saying? If your donkey falls inside a well on Sunday, will you leave it there and say, I will come back on Monday? You like money and you are talking. This woman, her, her health is more than your own donkey. If your donkey falls inside a well, wouldn't you go and get it? Hypocrites, Jesus told them. Do you know, if I can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of Christ, I have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch Satan like this and he will watch you. Like the gulf that separated the rich man and Abraham. This is how you will stand. Truly speaking, this is what empowers Satan in our lives. You know, I've taught this here in this house. Comes. When Satan comes, Satan is not as accurate as we think he is. Listen, when he comes, he wants to know what is in your heart. And the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random. If he touches your relationship and you don't react, he says it doesn't mean anything to you. He touches money. That's the one, that's the area he gets for many of us. He just touches your, your hundred naira disappears and he says, no way, we are fasting in this house. Who can? And the devil says, that's it. That's it. You think because you mention fasting, God is glorified. No. That fasting is a, is a revenge, it's an emotional revenge mission. Your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover, but it's still carnality. And you put everyone under pressure. Nobody is eating. Six to six. Whoever did this and that, and then the devil says, that's it. And let me tell you what he will do. He will sit on your finances and rubbish your life. Because he knows that that is the area in your life that will distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that? All of a sudden, they withhold your salary for two months. And a man who was a gentle, loving, godly, sincere, born-again, committed church worker 
all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there. So instead of him saying, Pastor Alpha, beat your wife, beat your children, beat your relatives, destroy your spiritual life, he just comes and says, Pastor Alpha, what is that one area that Christ is not yet Lord over? When he captures it, it will create all the effects that he wants. Satan cometh to me. What is he looking for? Something that gives him an attachment. And let me tell you, that thing is what we call lust. An attachment. I hope you like what I'm, pre I'm preaching. This is a deliverance message. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I watch, do you know, brothers and sisters, Kai, whatever God did to me, may he do it to you. Truly speaking. I say it with all humility. My life is a free life. I, am, I, will be, I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort. I think there is something about the sovereign power of God. Maybe it's an election of grace he did it. But the moment, hold my hands, David. Huh? Another person, come. Emeka, come. These are the luggages we carry. One other person, the ladies. I don't know how you are going to hold me. Find a way of holding me. Come, 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 come. We're acting something here. Hold any part. Come on, hold my hand, please. Come. Okay, they hold you. She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now, watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit, man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that we give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord. Because a broken, a broken um, what, spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face. So this guy is carrying all this load. Do you think Satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting? Do you know how Satan ties them? He doesn't use a rope. He uses your heart. That's what he's there. This is how to be spiritual. You come to a point where you say, Lord, I love you. But these things are occupying my heart. And Lord, I'm not irresponsible. But then you have to become Lord of my life genuinely. I am too attached. I can't sleep. I sleep for one hour per day because I'm thinking about money. A man can have nothing except it is given. And you let go the issue of the job. The devil will now deceive you and say, you better be responsible. If you don't think about it, it won't come. And he said, no. Jesus, I hand it over to you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the cross. You are getting free. You too, you are strange because you are now feeling lighter. Ah, ah. Now, all of a sudden, you could pray. Before you go to pray, after five minutes, you stop praying on your own and you are thinking. But now you could stretch for one hour, two hours. You are becoming lighter. And then all of a sudden, this one is a lady. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. It can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. That's the name. It's called idolatry. Let's call it what it is. She has become an idol. Not because she's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with God. So God is going to say lay it down. Lay it down does not mean leave her. Lay it down means be willing to leave her. Hi. And you say, oh God, no now. How can I leave this guy? This is my 11th relationship. And while you are talking all that nonsense, God doesn't say anything. He allows you. Then you now cry, cry one night, lie down, roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something lives in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one 
is ministry. No, I must shine. My colleagues started ministry before me, and I mean, I must do ministry. This, this is a lot of, especially some of us that have the grace of God upon our lives. No, I must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is. And God says, look, calm down. For three months, you are not holding any meeting. I said, God, my whole reputation was on this small fellowship. Now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again. God said, that's exactly what I was trying to show you. It was never about the prayer meeting. It was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition. So lay it down. You lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes. Never will it resume. Because you are, you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather, you say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just came back from the throne. And God said, you won't use me like that. Is God speaking to us? By the time you lay these things down, let me show you. The moment you focus on Christ, all of you come closer. I'm focusing on Christ. Look at what is happening physically. Are you seeing this? My focus is on him and I turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me. The goal was to be the epicenter of my life. Now, watch this. Whereas before, I was the maintainer of them. Now, he's the maintainer. So anytime he says, give the car. After all, Lord, is it not by your mercy it came? Take it. Not, oh God, this voice, if it's you, let my window share. All these, all these, these things we do are proofs of carnality. I was sharing with the leaders. Somebody called me to confirm whether it was God that spoke to him to send 50,000 to somebody. And I asked him, I said, if that God told you somebody is supposed to send money to you, will you ask to confirm and say, Lord, is it you? It's carnality. It's the same thing we are saying. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. All about you. Yes, it's all about you. Many people never prosper financially because of their attachment to money. Their attachment, obsession, obsession. If they are passing and they smell money, they turn their direction and God says, no way. It doesn't work that way. The proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go. The genuineness, anything you cannot let go, you are attached to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm so blessed hearing this message myself. Are we together? I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you I'm trusting you to get married. And Lord says, all right, I will direct you. Say, no, Lord, this is, this is the lady, this is the guy I must marry. You, you are the one who must be it. And God says, that's not the way it works. Thy will be done. It is for your glory. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. I give you all the praise. That's a spiritual man. Lord, this is the business I want to do. I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Oh, that's a language of spiritual man. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please, don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please, come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life, your ministry, and all that concerns you. 
A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. Born this into your spirit. You cannot have Naira and Kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you. You cannot have any idea until he gives to you. You can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle. That's why we don't give. You count offering and count five Naira. You ate puff puff 1,000. Took another drink. 1,000 or wine. Are we together now? And then you come before God and squeeze 10 Naira. And you are smiling now and all shall wait. And God is looking at your heart. Look what Jesus did in the church. He came and stood and saw what people were giving. It was a reflection of their attachment. It wasn't the money. He saw a woman who had all. Do you know why Jesus was touched? Because she really didn't know who he was. If she had known him, it would be hypocrisy because he was there. She just came. That means she was doing it unsupervised. It was what she would do. Whoever this God is of the Hebrews, I love him. And I lay down and do him. Love not the world. This is the problem of many people's destinies. Attachment. Attachment to money. God gave you a car. All of a sudden, you carry that car and put it in your heart. The garage is not enough for it. How can you have a garage for a car and, not, and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with God inside the toilet. Did you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's when you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your documents, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? It's not in your heart. It's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, you would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you gather the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Luke chapter 15. Let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15. Please give us verse 11. I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing. The story of the prodigal son. For many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother. All of them did different versions of the same thing. Follow me. Verse 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Two sons. Next verse. And the younger of them said to his father, Give me a portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them. Now watch this. Do you know that the house was all about his father, but the children had access? But then the child was angry because it was not in his name. That's selfishness. Self-centeredness wants it in your name. So that somebody was healed in Koinonia. No, I'm not happy. Let it be that Apostle Joshua Selma was the one who God used. So I'm not, I'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the God of heaven that touched the person. That's self. Are you seeing that now? Yes. The younger son had everything. But every time he saw his father, he had to wait on his father. Daddy, I want something. And the father was, okay, just a few minutes. I said, no, no. I want something so that I will, it will be in my name. And said, Daddy, I'm tired of depending on you. Ah, that's what Christians do. 
Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you for this power. Give me this thing so that I can do it anyhow I want on stage. Why must I wait for you and worship before you come? Don't you know that it's falling in my hand? After clapping for me and giving me water, I come and stand on the stage and I say, Lord, you have to come. Whereas people on my, it's my t-shirt they are wearing with my face, not your face. So Lord, give me this power so that I can operate it independent of you. Prodigal son. He didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asked it, receive it. Now watch this. He says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. A self-centered life wants to be the Lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Where did limitation enter his life? When he left. There was abundance and there was supply. Could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the Father, building an empire for yourself, and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself. 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine. Brothers and sisters, once in royalty, having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people. Now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities. He wanted to regulate everything by himself. This was his destiny. And he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. 17. And when he came to himself, you can be sure that he came to his mind. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare? and I perish with hunger. 18. I will arise and go to my father. That's what someone needs to do this night. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. 19. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your servants. Verse 20. Hallelujah. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, listen, his father saw him and had what? compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring it at the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry. Why? For my son was dead and now is alive. To be separated from the authority of God is death. To be carnally minded is death. You see it there. But to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace. And he was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Scene 2. Now the elder son was in the field. And he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing. The guy will always say he's innocent. Let's examine him now. And he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant. 27. And they said unto him, Thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. And he was, help me, and would not go in. Therefore his father came out. What is, whoever that father is, must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said 
Lo, many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress I at any of thy commandments, and yet thou never gavest me. So two of them wanted ownership. It's just that one had it secretly in his heart, and another verbalized and said, give me. Two of them had the same lust. It's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it. Whereas, and was he not eating in the house? Was he not celebration that was going on? Was he not a calf that was bought? He want, he said, let me go and make merry with my friends. Is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing? Two of them. Two of them were expressions of the same thing. One was quiet, just like you. And the other one is vocal, like the sinner roaming around. But the truth is that it's still the same thing. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted So, there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything. It must be car, it must be money, it must be reputation. And you are the quiet brother. You are the elder brother. You like it. You like the honor. You like the prestige. Are we together? You like and you can kill for it. It's just that you are not that courageous. So, we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person. And the other one who is vocal... But the word of God declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father. Their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem. Christ-centeredness. Maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry. That's why. We have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart. It may not be that you are humble. Maybe it's because Joshua Selman has not owned a private jet. That's why you think he's a humble brother. So God draws me down. Say, Mr. Man, stop looking at jet. Look at my face. So that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away. There are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say, no, it's westernization. Because you will know that everything God gives you, he demands that you act as though it's his own. God never gives us ownership. Owners are rebels in this kingdom. We are stewards of everything. His resources, mysteries, whatever it is. It belongs to him. It only passes through me. So brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire? Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your If it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? 
does your bank account belong to him does your anointing know you fasted for it to come but does it belong to him now does your wife belong to him does your husband belong to him does whoever you are in a relationship with does it belong to him do your children belong to him or they are his property you are only a steward over them does your business belong to you does your church does koinonia belong to him or is joshua selman's property is his um ladder of greatness ah far be it from me too young for that kind of stress Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Listen, this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination. Someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden, the fibroid is gone. It was so unconscious, there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk. You broke is a joke. God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you. The things that people do for me never, never stop amazing me. God for the things that God does but I am so sometimes I just look and I say Lord how someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said oh please send me your account number and I just as I was ending the call the spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for you know why God can speak to me like that? Because my life, the account, and the kingdom is his own. I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. You're my one desire. That you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles. He's the opener of the door. He's the lifter of men. You have separated your ego from these things. If it happens well for you, glory be to God. If it does not happen well to you, Lord, be praised. If the child comes, Lord, I thank you for the testimony. If the child does not come, Lord, while I wait, I still love you. That's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self flesh the lady must be this beautiful figure eight the guy must be this a millionaire must be this and people keep jam packing rubbish and trouble into their lives how about people who don't even gone at the days this issue of hearing god people have eroded it you just get up and say i want to go to abel kuta because there is green pastures there Papa, brothers and sisters let's respect and fear god There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. 
if it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have for everything I need is in you. Listen. causes of your worry this morning. Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry, trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are... I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say... <laughs> ministry grow. And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Praise God. Leave the issue of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you. I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting. I'm ashamed. God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger to know him. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centered and let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot do for you. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie, but there is nothing I know, especially things, things, I can't be that stupid. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take you for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha. I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. It was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. It was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy, I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the fan. That's what happens when your heart. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years. They love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say, look, just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. 
and God says you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not not Uza. You are doing Uza's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark, and you find out it will not only strike you; it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to Him. Ladies, please look at me, sisters. Let's hand over our hearts to Him and end this lust for things. Clothes, shoe, they are wonderful. God will give you more than your wildest imagination. Brothers, let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show I am rich so that all and sundry will respect it. It's all nonsense. If you are great, you are great. Honor is a mantle. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It's as simple as that. Tonight is a night of thorough repentance. We are going to cry before God and confess the idolatry, the sin, the carnality of idolatry to say, Lord, I've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me. I hand it over. There is peace in handing over your life to God. There is peace in handing over your children to God. There is peace in handing over your job. Hand over the difficult boss. Don't try to go and be looking for a godfather. And the godfather say 50-50, agreed, and you are in trouble. No. Allow God who will do it 100-0. He will give you. Jesus. We commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in. Because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. share so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching. We came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just, you know, to see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing here and he was telling me that, sir, I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you. And then I'm looking and saying, my God, what is going on? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, they, just talk to this. Please talk to this little boss of mine and let the church, whatever they want to do, be here. And I came back, and I think day before yesterday or so, they still called the protocol, the church, and said, somebody has given apostle a car. How do we convey it and bring it here? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we in now? February. Car, it must come. And God is saying, Papa, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Say, Matthew chapter 1. God, I've been crying. I've been saying, can God is saying, look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He will take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Oh, go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives. These battles are not even there. They were created by our lust. Sister, let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly there's no haze, there's no confusion. Straight. If your wife stand up and go and do her job. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around. What of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a genie and then beg a benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus two will be six. Three plus two will be not be six forever. Because
because there are demons, there are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things, and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see that. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came. Could it be that your prayer request, your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to him? When you empty it and keep Christ alone, then he begins to bring in every and everything. We are going to sing, take all of me, keep taking her for me. Don't just sing it as a special number. I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me. All of me, use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything to say. sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision 
in the spirit let that circumcision over money let that circumcision over power that circumcision over titles let it happen oh god purge me purge me purge my heart Remove everything, every lust that I'm so attached to, every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ centered life, a life where everything about you, aside from God, nothing is a do or die affair. Christ, love, and throne. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the lordship of Jesus. Mention it. Whatever God has done and given you, mention it by name and bring it under the lordship of Jesus. The marriage you gave me, I bring it under the lordship of Jesus. The children you have given me, they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I rededicate them a handover ceremony. The job you gave me, I hand it over to you. The relationship you gave me, I hand it over to you. If you brought it, you are the one who can maintain it. The burden is killing me. Pray. The burden is destroying me. Lord, you are the one who gave me the prayer group, the church, the business. I'm tired of struggling by my strength. Bring me rest. Bring me rest. The rest that only you can bring. Isaiah chapter 8 
verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8. We are praying. You let tonight's teaching enter your spirit and you will watch your life like a charm. Favor. Open doors. I tell you. The Bible says, Behold, I and the children whom who gave you? Who gave you? It's God that gives increase. I and the children the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Zaria, in Nigeria, in Israel. But where do the signs and wonders come from? From the Lord of hosts. I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare, Shakatopakatoreketa. Pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. For signs, financial signs and wonders. Supernatural signs and wonders. Dimensions of revelations. Dimensions of encounters. Dimensions of increase. Dimensions of influence. Dimensions of prayer grace. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Spiritual men. Kingdom minded people. you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. Please pray. Apostle, I need Jesus. I need Jesus fast in my life. Haven't heard you preach tonight. I confess that I need his life. I confess that I need salvation. That's somebody talking. Saying, Apostle, if you will make an altar call, I need to run to Jesus. No playing games. No playing games. I need Jesus fast. I need Jesus fast. And there are people here saying, Apostle, I thought that my heart was really with him. But now I'm realizing that I need to rededicate my life. 
I'm only going to count one to three because of time. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here very quickly. One. One. Are you coming quickly? If you are still thinking about it, stay back outside. Because once here is full, we may not have people here again. We have to stand outside. Ready to be praised. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey, it's a little key, a little dear. Then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. In you're the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost. Center of the kingdom. You're the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the age to come. Changing everything. You know me. Join them. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. If you are not sure you are not born again, join them quickly. And come and clear every gray area in your life. This is a destiny thing with Jesus. He's the center of everything. Those of you who are standing here, please just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not just coming out because I'm emotional. I really am serious. I come to you like the prodigal son. I know you will not cast me. Men may cast me away. Critics may cast me away, but you never cast anyone away. If you're joining them, please quickly join them. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I want you to lift your hands. I see a number of you. And those of you following online from whatever nation, whatever time zone it is there, connect with us. You are handing your life over to Jesus. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy lips and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. Say after me, those of you here and all those who are connecting, say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I come to you believing that you alone can save me, can change me, can lift me. I ask that you take over my entire life use it for your glory I receive your life tonight into my spirit and I declare that I'm a child of God the grace to love Jesus and to live victorious is mine today and forever keep your hands lifted I declare your sins forgiven I declare by the immutability of God's counsel that you belong to him. Partakers of his divine nature. I bless you. I command and curse the power of sin, the power of hell, the power of the grave, the power of sickness, and everything that is not in the Christ over your life. I declare that it leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the grace that keeps men, please help those under the anointing there. The grace that keeps men in the name of Jesus will keep you. And I decree and declare that everything that does not represent God in your life lives now and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. There are a number of you. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands quickly. There are a number of you. Just cooperate with them. But we'll be back. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development.
Lord, grant me the discipline.